So hi guys. So this hi guys. This should be me, and I hope the sound works. I'll wait a couple of minutes to see if the sound works after all, and if so, we can go on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so sound seems to work. I hope that everything works out to you as well. Patrick is playing the moderator and he will pass on the questions that you might have toward me because I cannot just act here and watch the, the chat version. So let's just start for now. I try to get my gloves on. <laughs> Probably should have used a size larger. And what we're going to do today is, as I told you already, is some coasters, which are these ones here. And they are for my exhibition, which I have in two weeks, so this um, should be fun making those. I have never made any of them before, so it might be fun. And I already have pre-mixed some of my colors here, which you can see lined up here in... For me, it's the top, for you, it's the bottom. So the, the screen is basically flipped, but I didn't find a way to, to flip it over. So, yeah, hope that's okay for you. Um, I have a yellow, I have a metallic purple, I have a wine, wine red. This is metallic copper, this is my gold, a black. This should be an emerald green, so basically much darker than you can see here, and a white. I have some more colors lined up here in case you have some color requests or I, or I run out of colors. <laughs> so I can mix up some of them later on. And I can also show you how I mix my colors because I had a request to show this in more detail because I don't show this so often. So if you have any questions on the go, just let me know. It is best perhaps to highlight Patrick's name so that he can see it immediately when you have any questions and he can pass them forward to me that I have something to talk about. So unless there are no questions, I will just, as usual, tell what I do and make the pours. Yeah. So, hmm? um, yes, this is MDF board. I bought them on Amazon. They are basically laser cut, so this is pretty sweet. So you can also see the, the edges, which are burned brown black or so. And it's pretty stable, so it's about three millimeters thick. And yeah, I hope, I guess they don't warp, so fingers crossed. <laughs> And I bought them in 25 packs, so pretty pretty sweet. I have about 50 to go today, so it will take a while. I thought about starting off with some um, uh, ring pours on them, just tiny ones, because I have not yet put any silicone in these paints. And later on I will do some, mm, I don't know, flip cups, dirty pours, swipes, whatever comes into my or our mind, and I will add silicone to these paints. So first of all, I thought about making some, some base here where I can put them on. Yeah. Resin versus acrylic core. Well, it's different. <laughs> um, I actually tried making a dirty pour and a ring pour with resin, which completely failed because the resin itself intermixed too much and I did not get any definition within the cells. So I had these colors completely intermixed, it got, it got mushed up together and I, it just didn't look cool. I did a, a dirty pour with thicker resin, so I waited a bit more until the end of the working time and poured it like a dirty pour, which worked better, but not as great as I thought. But I can show you something, just a second. I also once did, uh, did attempt a swipe with resin, 
which I made a separate video of. You might have seen this. And those are the results that I got there. They are pretty sweet. This one here is my favorite. Um, so a swipe did kind of work, but not as great as a regular swipe with acrylics. So I did not get any cells or such. It's more or less interlaced, intermixed. It's, it's pretty though, but not what I expected. But today there is no resin, it is just acrylics. So to kick this off, I will go with my most favorite color palette, with, uh, which is the black, the gold and the white. And we will see where the road is going to take me on the go. This is a regular coffee to go cup. It is um, paper. And the good thing is, especially when you want to make these smaller pours, that you can make an edge here, which allows you to pour more, which allows you to pour finer lines in the end. So let's start. So this is the, the gold and this is the consistency. So when it flows from the popsicle stick, <laughs> Holzstäbchen, um, it actually combines with the paint just immediately. So there is no doming up. I hope you can see this in the video. This is more or less the consistency that I usually use. Sometimes it's a bit thicker, sometimes it's a bit thinner. And as I always say, I do not measure any, anything. So this is just everything I bought. And the mixture itself is the acrylic paint that I use. This is the Athena brand. Or some colors like the wine red is from Americana Deco Art. And those are my, where are they? Here, my metallics. This is the brand. They are gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, blue will come later. <laughs> I, I just know that you will tell this, but I have it here. Fresh, f freshly opened, basically. And I have another one. Yeah. Uh, Laurie uh, would like to know uh, if you will finish the coasters later with clear resin to make it more durable. Yes, the coasters will be finished with resin when everything is dry, so I guess something about Perhaps tomorrow, perhaps on Monday, I'm not sure if I will film the entire thing. Probably I will make a short film clip when I do the resin over them, if you want to see this. Um, but basically there is no really magic happening when you do a clear coat of resin. So, up to you guys, up to you. So just let's see where this goes. Again, it's highly experimental. I've never done coasters before. Oh, and um, the medium that I'm using is again the Guardi binder. So if you have flow tool, use the flow tool. If you have whatsoever medium, use this one. Um, this is just perfect for me because it's rather thick. You can see this later when I mix one other color or so. And therefore I can use way more water than I can use with the um, Floatwell, for example, and additional plus this binder is half the price of the Floatwell. So it gives me double the amount for a quarter of the price in the end, which of course is pretty sweet. So, and just as a side note, we are a bit um, delayed. So when you ask me a question or when you ask Patrick a question in the chat, he will probably can he will probably be able to tell me the question about 30 seconds after you wrote it and you will see my answer even more delayed so don't wonder if it takes a bit longer to yeah to answer it's just part of the game yeah and then I would like to know uh, do you will not have to let a cure before putting resin in the um amanda Patrick just asked me if I don't have to wait until the, um, the acrylics are cured, until I can pour the resin over it. I get this question often and I don't see a reason why. Um, as long as everything is dry, which should be about the next day or even two days when you have a larger canvas and larger pour or heavy pour with a thick layer of paint. As long as everything is completely dry and you can touch everywhere without sticking or smudging anything, I myself think you are good to go, because I don't see any reason why, why you shouldn't. 
Um, as long as the acrylics is not dry, of course, you shouldn't do resin over it. I have never tried this one, but I cannot imagine anything good happening. But when it's dry, you can. I normally only wait until the second or third day, and then I put the resin coat over it. So I don't expect anything bad to happen. I cannot even imagine what could happen. When you pour on a canvas and you have the fresh fabric, everything can even evaporate from underneath still, even if the resin is applied on top. So I don't see anything that might happen there. Um, that depends on the medium that you're using um, when it comes to the mixing. Um, I normally go with two parts of the medium and one part of the paint, but uh, this is just my medium. So if you have mediums which are thinner, you might need more paint. Or if you have mediums that are thicker than mine, which I cannot imagine, you might need more water in the end. Basically, it, for me, it just counts how the end mixture is like. So if it has the consistency that I like working with, and I don't really care about if the ratio fits. So again, I don't measure anything. And if the mixture is, is good for me, if it feels good, then I am pretty happy actually. So, but this totally depends on your thickness of your paints or the thickness of your mediums that you use. Because the Artina paints, for example, are pretty thick compared to the Americana paints, for example, which are much more liquid. And even if you use these uh, metallic paints, those here, I only use about a fifth of the paint and four parts of the binder. So this, yeah, it's a bit of experimentation, I'd say. But as I always say, you should know your paints, so how they behave, how they react when they are dry, how they look when they are dry, and yeah, what you can make with them. So not each brand does react the same. So especially when it comes to the color intermixing and such, I had brands with uh, the same colors that I'm using here, which just smudged together and did not look nice in the end at all. Um, yeah, this is all part of the experimentation. I know so many of these pouring artists who switch between brands very often, so basically all the time, which always takes a lot of experimentation. And the more you experiment with your paints, the more waste you're going to have, I'd say. So I basically use these Artina paints now for a better part of my entire YouTube pouring career. <laughs> um, so almost the last year, I'd say. So I know my paints pretty good. If I would switch to any other brand like, I don't know, Windsor & Newton, I would totally have to, to get a hang for these paints again, which I normally would not like to do because it's, it's pricey. You need a lot of paint for acrylic pouring. And why, why changing if you're happy with the brand that you have? If they, of course, decide to send me some paints to play around with them, um, why not? So I'm totally up for experimentation, as you all know. But yeah, that's, that's my, my view on the things. So this works pretty good, actually. I don't want to pour so much over the edges because I like that they are brownish finished in the edges. So let's see how, how good this works. And Michael? Yeah. Chris, we would like to know, are the bottom of the posters taped or will you be putting something on the bottom when you're done? I'm just wondering about the paint dripping on the bottom. Um, Crystal, I did not tape them. They are just same on both sides. And I will try not to pour over the edges. Um, hope for the best, fingers crossed. I just hope I can stay, let it stay on top there and nothing will drip over. In case it does not work for the entire series and some things drip over, I may just paint the bottom again so that it doesn't look messy. This is actually what I intended so far, but as I 
tend to be clumsy at times. I'm pretty sure I will flip some of them over over the others, and we will see when we we will we will cross this bridge when we face it. I'd say. And the good thing is those are all coasters. It is not intended to be high art. I just want them to be somewhat pretty, that they can be sell, sold as a set, for example, and that they're just nice to look at. Which I think works pretty well with this color palette. What do you think? When the first color here to the golden palette is, is done, we can I can make some pores with your color requests. So you can tell Patrick what you want to see color-wise and he can tell me in the end. So we can all have a bit fun here. And just as a side note, can you tell Patrick if the sound is okay so far? I'm pretty sure I have a bit more bass than usual. I normally filter it out when I make the voiceovers. But this time here I cannot do any editing, so I'm not really sure how this comes through on, uh, on YouTube. Great. How many of you guys have done coasters yourself? So did you do this already? Is it is it something new for you? Something you would like to try yourself? This is actually pretty much fun. A bit more time intense than I had imagined in the beginning. But I have nothing planned today. What about you? Oh, um, what just came into my mind, I had a couple of requests when my varnishing video is going to come. I am planning to make the voiceover somewhat to tomorrow, so I can upload it mid next week perhaps. It will take a bit longer as it is a longer video and I have to, to edit a couple of different video projects together and make the voiceover. So this always takes a bit longer than just one single footage. But it will come. So if you be if you are a bit more patient with me, um, you will have it. I think by the mid of next week. Michael, mm -hmm. uh, Lori asked you if you done the piece show are the close up. Okay, I will. Um, for these little ones here, I will show you the close up when everything is poor, and I hope I won't flip them over. <laughs> um, I'll make the close up when when these are done. Oh, and before I forgot, something very important. Happy birthday, Carrie! <laughs> she wrote me yesterday that she has birthday today, so congratulations to you, and you will see the video, I think, later on. So she cannot be here with us today, but I just wanted to say my best wishes and many, many, many presents. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, I'm just tilting everything to have everything covered. <laughs> so I just pour it on there without any design in mind. So I don't pour anything over. I just tilt the color that I have on there straight from the cup and just see if it looks kind of nice and so far it will look nice. And for the next set, we can switch the color palette. So I'm open for any suggestions, what you would like to see. Preferably from one of these colors that I've already mixed up here. So just write, Patrick, what you want to see for the next round of rounds <laughs> from the color palette. So three or four colors, perhaps, which I can mix up. So, and one more, and then we can go for the close-ups. Basically, this is all the same. So, it's always just tilting and stretching the colors to have the entire thing covered. If this was a regular canvas, I probably would have poured some of the paints over the edges. But this time here, I want to have as much paint sitting on there and not rubbing off to not mess around with the underside of this little MDF board here. Michael? Yeah. Do you find some colors sink and disappear? Yes, it does. Um, this is something I have addressed in a couple of videos before as well, um, when it comes to uh, sinking of the colors in the cups. Um, this depends on the thickness of your paint and the pigment itself. So if you have paints that are thicker mixed than your other paints. The paint itself is heavier and will sink to the bottom of the cup. If you put this paint basically on the bottom of the cup itself, everything will be good. But um, if you pour it last, then everything will yeah, break through the other layers. And especially with white, because white is a very heavy pigment, um, white always sinks to the bottom. So. If you are really, really careful and pour from low distance and very carefully, everything will be fine. But um, yeah, if you, yeah, it will just break through anyways in the end. So this is the first close up. I hope you can see it. This is my webcam, so I didn't use it before. <laughs> this is a bit different than my regular camera that I'm always using for filming. But I can show you the end results in the end when everything is dried, of course, and embed this in another video. Do you have some uh, color visuals? Um, turkeys, black and white, or gray, or yellow, pink, and blue and white. What do you say about? Okay, for the color visuals. Can you, can you pick the colors that I'm already having here? <laughs> I will mix up some blue later, but just to finish these off here. Yes, this is correct. When you pour on tiles, the acrylic paint might peel off. This depends again how thick the paint is and if it gets wet in the end. So, so because the tiles are normally completely sealed, if you have this wooden plate here or a canvas, you have some kind of texture and structure and everything can a bit soak into it. When you have a tile, they are normally completely even, clear and coated. So you can clean them very easily, which is the intention to not have any dirt on there. If you pour on tiles and you have a very thick pour, it might peel off because the paint itself sticks together and cannot grab to the tile itself. And if you 
perhaps make one pour and you don't like it and you pour over it, the paint is going to come off and warp in buckles and such. So I, this is one of the reasons why I don't like working on tiles. So I never really did this. But I had this happen when I made my preparations for the planet pours, which you've seen perhaps in some of my space scene artworks, where I pour on the Yupo paper or just transparent paper. So if I pour there and I, it gets wet for whatsoever reason, it, it buckles and peels off of the plastic. So this basically has pretty much the same effect. So for the colors, let's go with copper perhaps. And some yellow. And some white. Some hmm, red rind. Or wine red, I guess. And a tiny bit of black. And a bit of copper. Central would like to know if there are silicone in the paint in the portrait. There is no silicone yet in the paint. I will make some silicone in there for the flip cups, which I will try to do later. But I think I will not be able to keep the paint only on top to not have it flowing over when I do the um, the dirty pours or flip cups. So I want to make the the clean ones first and then mess around later on. So this these pours here have no silicone in them at all. Basically, I don't really use silicone ever when I do ring pours because the cells that are forming are mostly not the prettiest. But when I do some kind of flip cups or such, I have the silicone in there to, to get some cells. As the ring pour is a pretty busy looking artwork in general, there is enough happening there to look pretty for a regular yeah, swipe, dirty pour or whatsoever you more or less want to have some more, more action happening than you want to have for the ring pours. At least for my taste. And something that you might also consider when you work in reds, um, if you want to lighten up reds, it's easier to use yellow instead of the white. Because when you use white, you get these pinkish tones, which look less nice, I think, than when you use the yellows. Yellows lightens it up a bit more natural, from my point of view. This is pretty much cover only now. So let's put one of this here. And the finer your tip here, the, the smaller the lines are which I guess you know already. And for all these metallic colors like the copper and this purple here as long, as, long as the, the gold, they really look different than when they are dry. They look like milky and pastel-like pastel now, but when they dry they are really shiny and shimmery and metallic looking, which is really cool. But you can never tell the end result unless you know your paints when everything is still wet. So this is another point where I need to know your paints. Uh, 
Hmm? What are the disks this is made of? Um, the disks are made from MDF board, which is basically pressed wood, pressed and glued wood, which is pretty nice because it's completely level and it does not warp, or at least not warp that much. It depends a bit on the thickness. If we have a large MDF board and only the size that I'm having here, like three millimeters or two millimeters even, they are going to warp. So for every for every larger size, I go for about five millimeters or even a centimeter. When I do some red artworks on them, just to avoid any warping. But for these smaller sizes here, I think everything should be should be fine. And the good thing is that they are completely even. When you have canvases of this tiny size, which are also which also exist, but canvases also are never really even. So they are always a bit saggy or they warp a bit. So this is way easier for a coaster, and you cannot really use a canvas as a coaster anyways. So this is pretty thin, it is completely stable, it is inexpensive, and it's easy to use. Do you have an image of the bottom somehow? Um, the bottom side, I when everything works as planned, and I do not pour so much paint on the bottom side, I will leave them as they are. They are just basically brown then, which is okay, because they are sitting on the table anyways. So I thought about painting them white, in the beginning, but well, wh why, why bother? It's just coasters. And you look only at one side, so only one side needs to be pretty. And I therefore hope to get the top side pretty. Um, Cindy would like to know if you has ever worked with interference paints. Um, Cindy, do you mean color shift paints? If so, I did not, but I so much want to do this. But I didn't get any any of these color shift paints yet here in my Amazon. I've seen a couple of videos where artists use the color shift paints, which will look really, really cute. And I want to try this so bad, but I need to find a good working paint, of course. What I just recently got is and you girls might know this. This is some, um, but it's like like nail polish glitter. So if we have fake nails or paint your nails, this is some holographic glitter that you can apply onto it, which looks like chrome or something, like greenish chrome and so. This is something I wanted to try mixing into resin. They just did arrive yesterday, so I haven't yet the chance to try them. But I can imagine that this might look really sweet. I don't know. You will probably see in one of the coming videos. <laughs> so I'm not running out of ideas, in case you were wondering. Although I really did a lot of lot of ring pours lately. <laughs> I'm just really addicted to the ring pours, as they are so versatile. And yeah, it just felt they had to be done. But I'm still having my to-do list, so whenever I get a request of a video that you guys would love, would love me to do, I have the list and I put everything on there, and when I'm running out of ideas myself, or when I have a couple of minutes over, I will make these request pours. So whenever something crosses your mind that you would like to see, just just let me know. I don't forget about them. Oh, and one question that actually crosses my mind. Um, whenever we do a video together, so Patrick and I, we do get requests that we should do um, videos together more often. Um, what do you guys think in general about it? So shall we do more couple hanging out videos? Uh, I don't know, vlogs when we are traveling or what we are doing all day long or 
uh, yeah, would you like to see some videos about this as well or do we want just to have Patrick joining every now and then for a video just showing his face in the video and making some forest and probably artworks in the future what what is your what would you like to see so what what do you think And then, if you want to see him more often, you might need to convince him. <laughs> so, as he's the moderator and is chatting with you anyways, um, go go convincing. It's really amazing to see how different each and one of them actually are. So although it's the very same cup and the same colors, everyone, everything is completely, completely different. Some are cuter than others. But I still so far like every little one of them. This one is pretty sweet, isn't it? And once these are done here, I'm going to torch them just a second to pop all of these little small air bubbles. Again, there is no silicone in there, so there is no selling happening. I hope at least. I don't want any cells to happen. But these little small air bubbles, I don't want to dry them in there as this makes these little dark dots in the end, which don't really look as, as pretty, I think. So I'm just going to go over there with the torch pretty, pretty, sh pretty quick. And this is one of the torches that I'm regular using. It's just a basic creme brulee torch, nothing special at all. Yeah. I should tell you they are all lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Oh damn, my most favorite one. Can you see this? I had my, my torch did, did blow too much and then there happened this, this blob of little tiny cells, which ruined the entire thing. This was unexpected and ah, bad thing. I think I will need to do this again here. Yeah. And this is this was my most my most favorite one. Damn. So we are just quickly redoing this one and pour something over it. Just a bit of light. So you see, this happens to me as well. Hmm? I basically love cells as well, but not, not in such a kind of blob as they did here. So yeah, it's a bummer, but we have so many more to go. So it won't give me sleepless nights, I think.
Okay. This makes it even worse. <laughs> okay, I'll put it aside for now. Perhaps I will take care of it later. Hmm? I should tell you that will also be printed on the wall and I got larger on the new server display of pizza separators so that restaurants are five places online. About six to twenty tolls. Okay, that's thanks for this tip. I will have to look this up for the larger surfaces. That sounds pretty sweet actually, as an idea. It didn't let me go. I think I have to play with it a bit more. No. This is not, it's re no, it's not pretty. Okay. I will be put it aside. So next color wishes. Wanna go some green now? Perhaps? Let's try some greens. Some green and some white. Just a bit. Some gold. Some more green. Bit of black. A bit of gold. So, let's see. Any more questions? I'm not used to talk about when I, I'm not just not used to talk all the time when I'm boring. So you might need to ask me some questions, otherwise I totally forget asking, uh, forgot talking. And especially talking live is so much, so much different to me than I normally use. Because I don't have the wonders of uh, video editing and cutting the sound layer to, uh, to something that sounds pretty. <laughs> But I like this color palette. I think the green really, really is cool. Although I most often fail with greens and reds and yellows. It basically only works with gold and blues. So let's see this. I think the next round we are going to make some some flip cups perhaps. What do you think? More like dirty pours, swipes? You should do a little slow before you pour. But when I make this roll, everything is going to intermix, doesn't it? I think I do this well when I make some dirty pours and such, but when I make the ring pours, I don't, I normally want my colors to be separated. Just because of the intermixing. But correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Michael? Hmm? What do you use the coasters for? Um, I use the coasters as coasters, basically. I will use them for my exhibition next uh, in two weeks. So I just like some small, 
some small items that is not as expensive as a whole canvas, I'd say. So something to to pick and grab for Christmas or just because they are pretty or just to be, you know, when when relatives are coming and you want to show off <laughs> that you can put something nice on your table, something like that. So this is not meant as a high class artwork in the end, just to be something pretty and cute for for a table. Or perhaps as a giveaway when when I get commissions or orders from my Etsy shop or something, I I normally put some some extras in the packages just as a surprise. And this is something that might work for this as well. So normally I put some pendants in there or I have these um, self-made kitchen magnets. Um, yeah, something like that. Question from Cindy. Sometimes I get clay for conditioning in colors and cells, sometimes not. Would it most likely be my mix? I doesn't matter anything either, just won't give me the right consistency. Um, Cindy, because the mixture, I, I did have the same in the beginning. And basically this is really mixture based. So if you have your colors mixed too thin, they tend to intermix more. So you're going to have more, yeah, much colors so they intermix more and build mud and you also get some larger cells in the end if you have your colors mixed a bit uh, thicker then you will have more definition in the cells uh, in, in, the, in the paints itself this was something I had to learn myself as well when I started because when I started I tended to to mix everything too thin because I wanted to be as savvy as possible on my paints and so I try to use as much water as humanly possible, which yeah, which made my life in the end much harder than it than it needed to be. Because my cells were really, really large and everything was um, flowing together and intermixing and built some awkward shapes. So yeah, when I started making my paints thicker, although it meant needing more paint in the end, but I got way better results in the end than when I did start off with the entire pouring season. And I did start last, oh, I think it was June or July, where I did my first pours, not with the intent of making so many as I did over the last year. So I just wanted to see and try how this works for me, if I like it, if I have fun with it. And I really thought about just doing a couple. So just to, can, just to be able to say I've tried it, I did it, and then let's move on with my realism. Um, but this is honestly so much fun and entertaining and has such an awesome community. So with you all guys um, joining and watching and helping out each other, which is really cool. Um, my heart still is beating for the realism as I also so often say, but this acrylic pouring is, is just something different and it's just so much more relaxing than um, than the realism. This goes way quicker and you have a much easier um, result in the end. So it's, it's much more rewarding than painting for about 12 hours for a portrait and only see little progress over time. So this is something really, really rewarding on this. Uh, Michael, mm -hmm. do you chisel them before this? They are not gessoed. If I use um, larger MDF boards, then I normally do prime them. Um, I don't always use gesso. Sometimes I use also acrylic paint just to have an underlayer. This basically just helps the helps to seal the surface. So especially when I work with uh, resin, for example, you can see me do this every time. I'd say um, just for two reasons, just to have the, the under layer sealed so that the resin or the paint does not soak so much into the wood um, itself. And especially when I use the resin, this has another effect that when I have the surface painted with acrylics and in a darker tone, 
which I most often do, um, the pigments come through way better. And it's just nicer to look at in the end, I would say. So I did some resin artworks on a white surface with really colorful pigments. But I always had the problem that I was able to see the, the canvas through. And this was always a bummer because even if we have the prettiest result and you can see the canvas, it always looks kind of unfinished. This one is cool, is it? What do you think? Um, so yeah, I normally paint them. But for those smaller here, I did not do anything to them. Michael, mm -hmm. uh, Johnny would love a Nemus in the tunnel that would show how to achieve perspective in landscape. Oh, Laurie, landscape. <laughs> um, when I, we all know Bob Ross, right? Um, this was one of the first artists that I was thrilled to get these skills, and I so much failed. <laughs> Um, when I when I watched him on television, this looked so easy. It's not. It's really not. I also got some of his DVDs and instruction videos. Um, I, I do have them. I did watch a couple of them, but I, well, you know, I'm not so much into landscape. Anyways, so if I would have succeeded in the beginning, this might have changed. <laughs> But I, I failed. So landscape for me was kind of out of uh, out of reach, and so I concentrated more or less on the portrait painting, because this challenged me even more. So I, I had fun painting in landscapes; it was kind of nice. But I also always felt challenged by by realism and uh, by portrait painting. So this was something I want to, to dive deeper in at this point, and so landscape fell a bit over the edge, I would say. So I basically don't really do landscapes. This is why I'm probably not good at telling you any tips for perspective painting on landscapes, but they are probably the same like with portraits. Yeah, perhaps not. Portrait is different. But I do have a couple of um, of people that I follow who do landscapes. One of them is Kevin Hill, for example, if you look him up on, on YouTube. He basically uses the Bob Ross technique himself and he does awesome landscape paintings. So if you want to learn something about landscapes, this would be one of my go-to go to yeah, YouTubers that I would recommend. And then there is another one which I always forget the name. I can't remember, but he, he does really awesome stuff. It looks like a photo in the end. Um, when I just comment me on my video and I will make the I will put you the link down in the, the comment section. So this is really something I would also recommend you watch if you are into landscape painting and want to be as good as him, he is just awesome. So it really looks like a photo. So what do you think about the greenish color palette? Was it a good idea? Was it a not so good idea? This one is really great. I, I really love this one. You know something that is really irritating? I can hear Patrick giggle in the background because he's following the jet, but I don't know what you guys are talking about. 
Where we are, the trial comes delayed at this current site for this Marriott. I'm just curious, I can hear you tell me to butter or to no. We are actually all of the above. <laughs> we are best friends, we are partners, we are married, and we are together for 15 years now. So, yeah, he's he's one of a kind. Just found and stay together. I think we met after our first, it wasn't even a date, he just visit, visited me at home. And three dates later, which were three days later, we were just together. So it was a really long, intense getting to know time, you might imagine. But yeah, we were we were together after three days and it's 15 years ago. So sometimes it doesn't need more. <laughs> And I love him each day more. So, yeah, this also happens. <laughs> so, just a question from my side um, Is the live stream so far okay? Do you like it? Is it interesting to look at? Is it too boring when it's not edited, like you are used to to my videos. What do you think? Let me know. I'm just thinking about how often I should do such a live video, or if it's just once a year. <laughs> let, let me know. I'm really curious. Because basically, well, I myself feel a bit feel a bit more secure when I can do the the voiceover and the video editing in the end, like I normally do, because I can cut and edit, <laughs> which is a great relief. But if you like the live streams and can ask questions along the go and like watching me doing this here in live um, and original, no sped up time, just let me know. If if you do, I can make these more often. Or perhaps I just take them for Patreon to not stress out myself too much. I don't know. So, but I'm always open for for ideas. So those are the green ones. This one is my far favorite. I can, I don't know why. So this this is great. I will show you a photo of the end results in one of my next videos. Because this screen is going to dry much, much darker. Um, yeah, I think I will a couple make more. I think I will make a couple more of those with black and gold and green before I switch to the next colors. And in case I have some, I will have some colors left in the end. I will make a larger pour so you can stay with me as long as you like. <laughs> Yeah. I should tell you that it is more real than it's like and gives us more confidence when we see how another artist works. Okay, so this gives me confidence that you are not bored. <laughs> because this is one of my my issues, I think. when Whenever I make videos and they are a bit longer than my regular about 10-ish minutes, I always stress myself because I think that people might get bored looking at my videos for too long. So it is quite nice for my ego to hear that you like what, what you see <laughs> and that you have fun. Which is basically everything that is this video about. So let's put this off. So we would like to know, do you prefer acrylic over resin, and if so, why? Um, if I would prefer acrylic over resin, that's a really good question. Yes and no. It's a clear yes and no. <laughs> um, it is just two completely different mediums. Like I, Like if you ask me if I like colored pencil or charcoal over oil paints, I like basically all of them, but each medium has its 
tricks and pros and cons. Um, I feel mys I myself feel more secure when it comes to to acrylic paints. So when it comes to pouring, I most of the times can predict that the result might be sweet or not. When it comes to resin, it has so many factors which are even even more uncontrollable than when we use the acrylic pores. Um, yeah, I, I really like using resins and I just made some beach scenes today for my exhibition in two weeks um, because they normally sell pretty well. Um, I, I like, I really like doing these and I like making these geodes, geodes because they are kind of controlled to work on, but Resin is is a, a tricky thing, so more than often it doesn't really turn out as I intended and it has a much different learning curve than the acrylic pouring itself does. And even worse, the resin is much more expensive than the acrylic paints. So when you make your first resin pours and still are learning, you waste a lot of the resin. And as resin is so much cheap, uh, so much more expensive, you know what I mean? And I think most of the resin artists are facing the same issues. So, but yeah, this is, I like working with both. But it is more like when I want to make something quick, so like a pour, like here, I prefer to go for the acrylic pour. Just, yeah, you know? <laughs> so which colors would you like to see next? And perhaps I can mix some silicone in there. So perhaps some purple this time. Some purple and some white. Help. <laughs> Let's just see. So let's put some silicone in there. And this is the silicone that I'm using. This is the second bottle, so it really lasts a long time. The first one I got last year, this is just a really new one and I just need a couple of drops or just one drop here for these little, little cups. Well, Laurie, congratulations. <laughs> I did, um, I just had one session of making a, these pendants, which I also made a video from last year. And I also thought they might sell pretty well for my last year exhibition, which they did. I don't know, perhaps it was the colors that I did. A couple of them sold, but not so many. Most of them were either on the bluish side or on the reddish side. Reddish. <laughs> um, I don't know, I still have so many of them left. This is 
why I have a couple of them put into each um, packages what I've sent um, for yeah for my customers and commissions uh, I don't know if you were lucky and so many results you should definitely make more of them so but it was fun making them it was pretty much time intense which I did not expect in the beginning but um, yeah it, it was fun but as I have so many left, I just, what am I doing? I just want to make a dirty, dirty cut. Yeah, just, just go on making them. So, Michael, mm -hmm. how much of the stirring affects the size of the cells? Um, stirring the paint? Basically, as a as a basic rule, the more you stir, the the smaller the cells are going to become. Um, if you have not seen this, I did an acrylic pouring basic video a couple of months back, where I also go into the physics, if you want to call it, um, like that behind the entire thing. So it depends a bit on the thickness of your paint, and it also depends how much silicone you use. And how much you stir. So the more silicone you use, the more silicone is going to come through, of course. The thinner your paint is, the more of the silicone is going to come through in the end. And the more you stir, the smaller your cells are going to become. Because the more you stir, the smaller the drops of the silicone are going to be within the paint mixture. And so it will form smaller cells. But if you want the entire physics, I also drew this out on paper. Um, just have a look at this video. Um, just Google for MK, MKLGRM, which is basically Michael Grimm, in case you wondered what this actually means, um, which is my name. Um, yeah, look up Michael Grimm pouring basic video and you will, you will find it. Mike Wood, mm -hmm. that is the cleanest, neatest pore space I've ever seen. Tell us, Amanda, are you about to get messy? I am about to get messy. I try not to get messy as long as I do these pores here. I still have about 20 or so left after these. Um, but I will get messy in the end when I make a pour from all the other colors on a larger canvas, I'd say. Because it, I mixed way too much paint as you have seen me doing so often. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it will get messier in the end. Um, in case you don't want to stick around until everything is finished, I can also make another video when I make this color pour. But if you're not bored and if you want to join, you can. we can make this in a live video here. And normally it's not that tidy when I when I work, so don't get me wrong. Patrick knows how bad it can be sometimes. And I'm pretty Pretty excited to see how these look when I torch them because they are so tiny. I have no idea, to be honest. I don't like this. So what do you think about my color choices so far? Was it was it nice already? Or do you think I totally messed up one, one set? They love the color. Yay! <laughs> Any favorites so far? Uh, 
doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. I should tell you, no one spoke to art dressing people. They say not to use silicon when sleeping with dressing because there is no way to really get rid of all the silicon and it will repeal the dressing. Yes, Laurie, I know, and I can give you a workaround on this. This was something I'm always um, also going to tell you in my upcoming varnishing video, which I was promising for about a month now to, to upload. I will make this coming somewhat next week. Um, when you use, uh, when you want to make a resin layer over your acrylic pour, which I guess many of you want to do, and you have silicone on there, there are a couple of ways to basically remove the silicone which is first I put some baby powder or kitchen flour over the artwork and let it sit there for about half an hour and the flour or baby powder is going to soak up um, the silicone which is sitting on there and then you can just wash it off pretty pretty easy I'd say. Um, when this is done I also use some um, light soap and wash it over again and this basically removes most of the silicone. You will not get rid of 100% of it, but most of the times this is just enough to have the resin coat be even in the end. But in case you are not even with the coat, there is another tip that I can give you on your way. And this is just adding a couple of drops of silicone into the resin itself. So when I have the resin on my canvas, for example, and I see that some of these gaps are forming, that you have these dents in there. I put a couple of drops of the silicone, just the same stuff that I'm using for the pores, and smudge it around with my fingers. You can, of course, also premix it in the resin itself. You might notice that the resin itself gets a bit milky, so it gets a bit, it gets a bit milky, but it's not really visible when you have poured it on your artwork. But having the Silicone mixed into there will prevent the resin to make these dents. It really works great. And the silicone also rises to the top of the resin again in the end. And you have some kind of streaks on there, which it looks like, yeah, some, some streaks. You can see them. And you can just wash them off and everything is perfect. What kind of resin I use? I will answer this question just after the close-up. Isn't it pretty? Those little cells? That's so pretty. This one is really neat. Yeah, which kind of resins? I have used a couple of them. When I started off with using resin in general, I bought myself the art resin because I read everywhere that the art resin is the best resin to use and the safest to use and it contains the word art, so you have to use it for art, which was um, a good kickoff for me, I'd say. It was easy to use, it was fun and it was it felt just good, in my opinion. And this color totally intermixed and does not look nice anymore. Um, when I had used up all my art resin, which I had available at this time, um, I looked for alternatives that are a bit, yeah, let's say cheaper. And I looked up my Amazon to get something cheaper. And I found the recommended one that I also used in so many other videos that I yeah, uploaded. It's not comparable, I'd say. So I think I, yeah, I have it here. It is this stuff. Um, it works great, but it's way more liquid than any other resin that I've worked with. It, um, it causes some issues because it's such so liquid. So it flows basically everywhere, 
and the art resin or the mastercast resin or the resonate resin are much much thicker which is so much easier to work with on so many areas so these are my go-to's I just recently bought myself a canister of the mastercast resin which I also wanted to test out for so long now and I really like it I used it today the first time it's really it's really thick and nice to work with the Resonate resin is something I really enjoy working with as well because of the short um, curing time. So the Mastercast has about 30 minutes working time, the Resonate resin has about 15 minutes working time, which is really short, and the Art resin has about 45 minutes. And whenever I make these smaller artworks or geodes and stuff where I don't want the, where I don't want the resin flow over everywhere. <laughs> um, I like the, the Resonate resin just to have everything cured quicker and when I have larger artworks, geodes or something I do with resin I like using the yeah the Resonate and uh, not the Resonate the Art resin or the Mastercast resin because they yeah you have more time to, to work with. But those are actually all the four resins that I have used so far. Um, I've just recently learned that you US guys have something like which is called Pro Marine Resin which seems to be pretty cool and pretty inexpensive compared to the amounts that you can get but I contacted but, but I contacted oh my god <laughs> but I contacted them and they unfortunately do not ship to Germany so I cannot really test this out for you but as much as I've seen on Instagram and so it really looks kind of kind of a good kind of a good product. So if you want to test this out, I think it wouldn't be the worst idea. And you can of course let me know how much you like it. And yeah, once they might ship to Germany, I'm more than happy to give it a try. but we can't get it here. Just as a quick question in between, are you fed up with coasters already? So would you like me to pour a canvas instead? So just to see something different? Or is it okay for you if I continue with the coasters? Okay, which size? Because Patrick is, uh, because Patrick needs to get me the canvas. And when you want to see the canvas, I also need the colors that you would love to see on that canvas. Of course. So Okay, so then I will just let Patrick grab a canvas. <laughs> um, 
Okay, I can do this. Teal, black, and gold it is. And Patrick is going to grab me a 30 by 30 canvas. Yeah. Well, these these dirty pores are way more dirty <laughs> than the ring pores that I started off with. So I think I will go back to the ring pores later on. It's much easier to handle on these little small canvases here without messing too much around. Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> this is selling. So this happens when you stir your paints very much. So yeah, a million cells again. Here also, not as many. And this is a bit more of the royal look. Okay, just put these aside for a second. Put these on oh, these are my, my dirty cups. You might have seen them in other videos. I reuse them as often as I can. And this one here had resin in there. This had resin as well, acrylic paint and resin. Um, I use them as often as I can, although it looks really messy. <laughs> but yeah, saving the environment as much as possible in this techniques here, of course. So. Prepping the canvas, so this is the 30 by 30. I always use my pinboard pins like those here and stick them underneath. I'm not sure if I've ever shown this in a video, but I often have told this. Just to have the canvas elevated from the surface. This is already a pretty long live stream, isn't it? Already half an one, ah, one and a half hours. But I think I can finish off these coasters later as well. It doesn't stick. So what are you guys actually doing? Are you just watching or have you some housework to do along the go or ironing your clothes or just watching? Just curious. Okay, here's the canvas, it is prepped, put all these things away, and what technique would you like to see? Would you like to have a ring pour, yay! Or would you like to see a dirty pour, a flip cup, a swipe? Well, no swipe, I don't like the swipe so much. So let me know what, I make a majority vote, let Patrick know, he will tell me in the end, and I can show you how I mix my paints um, so far. Just use a messy cup and I have two different teals. I have a Z breeze, which is more on the greenish greenish side, and I have um, it's called Indian turquoise, which is more on the bluish side. No ring pour, please. Okay, no ring pour. <laughs> so which which one of these teals? More greenish, more bluish. Green, green, blue, greenish, flip cup, blue, blue wings. 
Okay. Patrick said blue wins, and we are going to make a flip cup. So yeah, this was the acrylic binder. So this is the amount, and this is how how thick it is. So if you can see this. And I just add the paint, about one third or one fourth. Again, I really don't measure it. It also depends a bit how expensive the paint is. So if the paint is really expensive, I bother more for the paint, which is for, for those, for example. So this paint is a bit more pricey, so I tend to use less of the paint. If the paint is not that expensive, I normally don't care so much about the amount of the paint. Then I mix it together and then you have the consistency. So this one is too thick for my for my taste because it's, it remains too long on the surface of the paint. So this is how I normally check it. Then I just add some regular water. Again, all eyeballed. Stir it around. And this is the pretty with the acrylic binder that I'm using. If I accidentally use too much of the water, I can just add some more binder and everything will thicken up again. If you're working with the float fill, for example, and you mix too much water in and it gets it gets too liquid, you will have a way harder time getting getting it back thicker again. So this one is really, really cool as an extra bonus for my acrylic binder. So, okay, what, what were the colors? We had teal, we had gold, we had black and white. What, what did we have? Greenish and blue. Mix the teal and gold to make a little green. Okay, and some black and some white again, right? Yeah. I think we need silicone for this. So, silicone. Silicone, some of the black, some of the white. Patrick is, Patrick is just making some, some dinner. I guess he's starving. <laughs> I did not expect this is uh, taking so long. Um, so he isn't at a chat at the moment. So here we go. Just use a little cup. Okay, I'm probably using way too much paint again. So things are getting messy now. So this is how it looks like. I don't really swirl around either when I make these. I just flip them over. Waiting a bit. And pushing away. This is pretty black. And you can see cells are forming already. 
So let's see how this is going to turn out in the end. And it was not too much paint at all, it seems. But I must say I never had so many cells forming right away in the beginning. This is also kind of new to me. And the result is so, so much different than I expected. Well, it was your color choice. So thanks for that for now. I'm pretty excited to see how this one dries. I just need to tilt a bit more to get rid of these edges. I never really had so many cells happening without even having touched the torch. This was uh, something new. You see? You see me surprised. Sure, if I like this area here. This normally is the, the time where I speed up everything. <laughs> so now we have to, to wait until I'm finished with the edges. And I, I tend to, to make the edges right away when I have finished the, the pour itself, because otherwise I just forget about it. And then in the end, the edges are not covered. You know. So, but this is really, really pretty. And you might not be able to see this, but this interlacing here in the in the bluish part is it's really really cool. Just need to torch the edges a bit just to make them look a bit more fitting into the entire piece. Let's go up here a bit. Yeah, I think I like it. So you made a good choice. <laughs> and then, then something that I also oftentimes do is when I work with the acrylic pores or the resin works, when I have these paints drip off at the edges I use a stick, a popsicle stick or a Holzstäbchen. I would so much love hearing every, every one of you saying Holzstäbchen. One day perhaps. And I just go around the edges and remove the drops. 
which is not so much a problem with the acrylic pores because the paint dries pretty thin but when you use the resin you always have these drops at the sides and so you can remove them as long as the resin is still liquid and you won't have these drops which saves you an hour of hard work in the end and I so much hated removing these these drops so yeah this is just something you know it's pretty handy and easy to do easy to do okay I will bring this one into the kitchen to have it level and dry and I will ask Patrick to give me another canvas because I want to try a green, black and gold pour because I so much love the little coaster and then I think after that one we can wrap it up because it was really a long a long a long live stream and so much talking for me <laughs> So back here at my desk. So it looks a bit messier now. I hope most of you are happy that it is going to get messy. <laughs> Just need something to prep the canvas again. Ah, Ellie, you mean uh, Holzstäbchen? Yeah, this is my my internal joke actually because I had so many issues saying popsicle stick and I never really understood why it's called like that because we just call them Holzstäbchen because this is wood which is Holz and it's a Stäbchen which is a stick so a, a wooden stick basically translated and this just sounds better than popsicle stick when I made the first voiceover where I wanted to say this word I have to re-say it about five times and cut the, the voice over just to have have it done. So this was really really annoying. <laughs> but now I basically came over myself and I can say it. So thanks for everyone who helped me in the comments how to pronounce it. <laughs> So let's see. Let's see. So we have this one. I still have a bit of the gold left, which should be fine. I have green left, which I can use as well. I just put some silicone in there. Okay, which technique for this one? Ring pour, flip cup, dirty pour. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's say the dirty rinse. I don't really like the swipes on larger canvases. I don't know. I, I did so many of them when I started out, and I never really liked the look of the swipes when it just was a swipe. I really liked the look when I made these silhouette paintings and swiped into the color, which I also made a video from, in cooperation with Crafty Gen. So this really looked cool, but when it comes to just a regular canvas and swiping. Swiping is basically my, my backup workaround. So in case I messed up and really don't like the result, I normally try to swipe it just to see if something pretty comes out. 
but if not, it's, it's lost. So rarely happens, but sometimes it does. So doing a swipe for me felt, always feels like I failed before I even started. <laughs> so this is why I don't really swipe on those larger canvases. And this is not really a large canvas, but you know, you know what I mean. I think I need a bit more gold. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for Artina to answer me when they are planning to move their products over to the US. So they told me last year that they are planning to move to, to TS. So when it's ready, you can get them via the end zone there. But they did not yet respond to my last email. So once I know any update, if they are coming, I will let you know. Because especially the gold and they are blue, it's just breathtaking. I really love those two colors over, the, over all the others. Some more green. Like. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. I have no idea if this works, but I just hope for the best. So it was a dirty pro, right? Okay, let's see. I usually do this kind of scroll when I do a dirty pro. I don't know. It just comes handy for me. Okay, we've lost so much of the black. I don't know if you can hear it. Patrick is running through the flat, <laughs> getting some something to eat and trying not to miss out so much from the chat. This is kind of funny. <laughs> It's like in a comic. Okay, edges are covered. This is basically the look that I like to have in these pores, because now I can torch it. And something, in case you don't know that, in case you haven't realized it, just give me a second to clean off my hands. And to get rid of this chunk of paint in here. So, 
when you do these um, yeah, dirty pours and you tilt it much and you can see here on the here where the green is shimmering through the gold this is actually the look that I like so much because when you now torch it you will get so many cells which many of you are going to look for I guess so just a second this is another chunk of paint and here is one more so just getting rid of it And then let's see what happens. Well, so pretty cool. I forgot to put white in there, right? <laughs> Just realizing now that I didn't put any white in there, but I really like how this one looks. Opinions? What do you think? Like it? Like it more? Like it most? I'm really I'm really happy that the green came out. That's great. And when it dries as dark as I hope, and as it and as the name says it, <laughs> um, this should be really cool. Okay, great. Patrick told me all all the good comments. <laughs> so yeah. Pretty sweet, I think. Okay, I will put this one aside as well. I think I will make a short video when all the pores are completely dry. The next days so I can varnish them and perhaps if I like I can make the, the resin code for them and yeah just talk a bit about it and I think I'm going to wrap up the the live stream for the day because it's all it's already about two hours so no one is going to watch it um yeah let me know in the comments if you like this if you thought it was fun if I should do this more often I pretty much think I will do this a couple of times for my Patreons. So if you want to be among them, just go over to my Patreon. It's linked in my in my channel here as well in the video description. It's pretty new, so there is not much there yet, but it's going to come. And if you like the live streams and Q&A sessions and so, they are more likely to come there. But I, I don't know, a couple of times perhaps for YouTube. So this is completely new to me. Let, let us see how good this works. <laughs> I nevertheless hope you had fun and if you still have any questions leave me down below in the comments or on my other videos that are coming the next days so I will always be happy to try to assist you as good as I can and to answer as many questions as possible and yeah if you like this live stream <laughs> and have not yet subscribed to my channel please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss my new videos yeah, and everything that I tell in every video. So share with everyone who knows, uh, you know, what who knows. Um, yeah, and I wish you a great rest of your weekend. So thank you for taking part in my first acrylic pouring live stream. It really meant a lot to me that so many of you tuned in and joined me. It helped me a lot bridging the time where I normally don't talk. <laughs> And I hope the language was okay as well, because I had no chance to edit it. So thank you for watching, and yeah, see you in my next video. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye-bye.